Okay, uh, good evening. I'm going to uh, quickly go through uh, the process to graph a sine graph and a cosine graph and a tangent graph. Hold on tight. Uh, this show is going to go pretty quick. All right, we should know that for one cycle of a sine graph, I need to create five major points over the period for that graph. Okay, so I know that I, I need to create a first point, a second point, a third point, a fourth point, and a fifth point. All right? Now, to get the the vertical uh, parts of those points, I first take a look at the k at the end here, the 1. I know that for, for this graph, the graph will be shifted up one unit on the y-axis. Uh, so I'm going to have a center line that will be at positive 1. The next thing is I need to create my amplitude lines. Because my amplitude is 2, they notice that's a positive 2. Uh, I ignore in the negative for now. From the center line, I'm going to go up two units and create my amplitude line. So I get a little dashed line at, at, at three. From here, I'll go down two units, down to zero, down to negative one, and I'll create another dashed line and come in like this. So I know that my points, the, the points on the uh, up and down part of those points, have to be either on the bottom amplitude lines, they have to be either on a bottom amplitude line, a middle amp uh, the middle center line or this top amplitude line. I know all the points have to just be either somewhere on those dotted lines. Now, how do I figure out where I'm going to put them on the x-axis? Well, we know that the h value from my equation will always be the first h uh, x on my uh, x-axis. So pi over 4 is my first uh, x value. Now, to create the next four points, I need to divide my period equally amongst those four points. So I need to find my period. One of the formula for period is 2 pi over b. In this case, b's value is 3. So when I divide 2 pi by 3, I get my period to be 2 pi over 3. Now, that's the whole period. Remember that I want to divide him up equally amongst the four next, the next four points. So now I'm going to take that period and divide him by four. So when I do that, I get two pi over three. Well, divided by four is the same thing as multiplying by one fourth. So when I do that, I get two pi over twelve, which reduces to pi over six. What that means is I'm going to take this starting point, pi over four that first point of pi over 4, and from him, I'm going to add pi over 6 repeatedly, this pi over 6 repeatedly, to each point to get from one point on the graph to the next point to the next point. So pi over 4 plus a pi over 6 plus another pi over 6 plus another pi over 6. plus another pi over 6. Okay. Now, again, the issue here is the pi over 4 that I see and the pi over 6 that I have, those don't have the same denominator. So the, this guy and this guy have to match. Well, between 4 and 6, the common denominator is 12. So I need to convert both the pi over 4 and the pi over 6 to fractions in terms of pi over 12. So pi over 4 would convert to oops, would convert to 3 pi over 12. My highlighter's messing up here. All right, pi over 6 would convert to okay, just one second. Pi over 6 would convert to 2 pi over 12. So, instead of starting with pi over 4, I'm going to use his alternate version, 3 pi over 12. So, this becomes 3 pi over 12, which, again, folks, don't, that's the same thing as pi over 4. Instead of adding pi over 6, I've got to add 2 pi over 12s repeatedly. Okay? So, 
when I add 3 pi over 12, my first x, my first point in the x-axis, plus 2 pi over 12, the next point I would get on my graph is at 5 pi over 12. Adding another 2 pi over 12, the next point on my x-axis would be at 7 pi over 12. Adding another 2 pi over 12 to get to the fourth point, I would get a 9 pi over 12. And adding one last pi over 12, a 2 pi over 12, I would get 11 pi over 12. So now, I'm going to erase this. My five points to create my cycle will be located at, in terms of pi over 12. Now, notice that my first my first pi over 12 is at 3 pi over 12. 1 pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12. 3 pi over 12 will be where my first point is. And then I've got to go, I need to go all the way up to 11. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All right, so 3 pi over 12 is my first point. Then the next one will occur at 4, 5, at 5 pi over 12 is my next point. And this highlight has been bothering me all night long. And the next one will be at 7 pi over 12. Eh, 7 pi over 12. Let's try that again. Nine pi over twelve, and then eleven pi over twelve. Okay. Now, where does sine start? Now I'm going to fill in the the actual points using um, the pattern for sine. Well, I know that sine starts on the center line. So the first point, it, it'll be over 3 pi over 12 and on the center line. So there's my first point. Now, my next point for sine is usually the top of the wave. But because of this negative here, I know that I'm going to, instead of going up, it's going to reflect over the x-axis. So it'll go down to the bottom amplitude line. At 7 pi over 12, I'll go back to the center line. At 9 pi over 12, I'll go back to the top line, top amplitude line. And then at 11 pi over 12, we're back to the center line. Connecting these with a smooth graph, I get my sine graph that looks like this. And this is the graph of a sine of, of, this, uh, of the sine function. Now, what would have happened if I simply had taken out the word sine and it had been the word cosine? Well, let's take a look here. If I replace this with the word cosine, nothing about this problem changes except for the pattern that I would have. Instead of having the sine pattern, instead of having the sine pattern here, these five points would be arranged differently. Sine, instead of starting in the middle, normally starts at the top. But because it's reflected, it'll start at the bottom on the bottom amplitude line. From here, I only have one choice to go to. From the bottom, I have to go to the center amplitude line, and then up to the top amplitude line, and then back to the middle center amplitude line. Oh, don't move the amplitude line. Let's take a look at that right there. And then back to the bottom amplitude, then back to the bottom amplitude line. Right here. And then when I connect this with my smooth curve, my graph looks like this. Then down, then up, and then down, and then up. And that's a cosine. But notice you would have done the exact same work over here on getting creating your five points on the x-axis for sine and cosine. The amplitude line and the center line will also be the same. Okay, now let's do a tangent graph. Suppose I have y equals 3 tangent of, say, 2x. Now, if you recall for tangent graphs, 
the main focus is you've got a center point with asymptotes on each side of the center point. All right? And then a smooth curve that goes from asymptote to asymptote in an S-like shape like that. Again, I know that the period has to start on one asymptote and go across to the other asymptote. So I've got to have a half a period to the right of that center point and a half a period to the left of that center point. So if I can find the center point, I can find the period. I'm just going to add and subtract half a period from that center point to locate my asymptotes. Well, we know that the center point is always the value h comma k. And those are the values that are added or subtracted from the x inside parentheses and the x outside the or in the a a k uh, the y outside the parentheses. Since there are no parentheses, h must be zero. There's nothing added or subtracted. Likewise, there's nothing added or subtracted at the end, so k must be zero. So my center point is zero comma zero. Now my period, the normal period for tangent, is pi. I divide him by this b value to create my new period. So my period for this graph will be just pi over 2. Now again, that's a full period from asymptote to asymptote. I need to create half of that period to add that from to add and subtract that from my center point to get to my asymptotes. Well, if I divide pi over 2 by 2, well that's like multiplying by a half. So that becomes pi over 4. So if my period is, or if my uh, half a period is pi over 4, my center point is 0, to get to my asymptotes, all I'm going to do is take my h value of my center at point 0, and I'm going to add and subtract that half a period, which is pi over 4. And so my asymptotes will be at negative pi over 4 and positive pi over 4. Okay. So my graph, when I go to graph this, will look something like this. Straighten some of these things out. So my center point is at 0, 0, and my asymptotes will be at positive pi over 4 and at negative pi over 4. Let me slide this x-axis back a little bit. And at negative pi over 4. So now let's clear this stuff out of the way. I draw my asymptotes in, and I make my S-curve, and that's the graph of tangent, okay? That's one cycle. If I wanted to graph another cycle, because I know that I, I, my, my important parts, the asymptotes and the points, come in half periods, I could also create another point on my graph at 2 pi over 4 by just adding, simply adding another half a period. And then I could get another asymptote by adding another half a period to this point. That would be at 3 pi over 4. It would be another asymptote. And the graph would come in and up like that. And now I have a graph of two periods, or I'm sorry, two cycles of tangent. And that's how we graph sine and cosine and tangent graphs. Hope this is beneficial.